Uh, heading I'm over going. to the Nightclaw Nest. We're ambushed. Well, I guess it's up to you. You want to head to the Nightclaw Nest, or do you want to head to Cigar Quay? The Nightclaw oh. Nest has had decent food. That was the inn. The Cigar Quay is the kind of like uh, decent-sized bar with Rodagog in it. Had I would want to go food. introduce Davith to Rodagog. Okay. It probably has better food if you're trying to just like get quality of food. It is a little further away, but it's not more than a 10-minute walk. A Cigar Quay is not super big. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go there. Yeah, sounds okay. good. So... Heading to Cigar Quay, you see that familiar single story, pretty big structure near the docks. You can kind of see them off in the distance. And now that it's, you know, pretty much like noonish, you can see that the docks are back to their usual, usual, usual bustling activity. You know, boats coming to and fro, people unloading, loading cargo. Uh, even just at a quick glance, you see zero people with the black leather armor that you've become accustomed to seeing with the blades. Um... And as you head inside the tavern, there is a familiar Rodagog tending the bar. Handful of guests. Seems like business has picked up a little bit. The last time you guys were here, there were like two people. Now there's like a half dozen, so it's a regular riot at this place, even though it's still 90% empty. I'm going to give the overly macho forearm grasp handshake to Rodagog and give the yes. intense eye of guy contact. Brother! And say hello. I, you've been pushing too many pencils, Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> and introduce him to David. I love I, I love that reference. I love the idea of him being Carl Weathers. Um, <laughs> so the now familiar uh, half orc kind of lights up, and he's got that still like weird jutted out toothy grin when he sees you. He says, "Ah, Karash, my favorite troublemaker." <laughs> uh, it's it's only been a day or two, and it still feels like it's been too long. How are you? Well, things are better now that you guys have done what you did at the docks. Can't deny that. Still some people coming in here getting too drunk, but they're easy enough to throw out in the street. I'd like you to meet my friend of my, or a member of my clan. This is Daybeth. We found her back in uh, the Sanguine Keep. How do you do, miss? Unusual to see your type here, but you're welcome here if you're a friend of Karash. Are you going to have a conversation with yourself? I, I, just, I, I just had that thought. I finished my sentence and I was like, who am I waiting for to talk? It's me. I'm me. Oh, I'm, yes, I'm very excited. Well, I've, that's good to hear. As, as more and more NPCs enter this world, I'm going to be running into the Matthew Mercer conundrum, aren't I? Talk to myself like a fucking crazy person. Uh, <laughs> she is sort of quiet, conveniently enough, in this particular moment. Uh, mostly because she's like... She doesn't seem to have met him in her time here. Maybe because she's not a drinker. Maybe she didn't really come here. But she just kind of take him in. But she she kind of smiles because she likes the back and forth that you have. She she lets her guard down pretty quickly. Um, but doesn't say a whole lot to him. She's just kind of like, she just thanks him for being a friend of Karash. Because friends for their people are kind of hard to come by right now. Fair enough. Uh, have you heard any news of the Blades or anything else in town that seems say, out of the ordinary. Well, I talked to Tamara earlier, and she seemed convinced that they were gone. I haven't seen any, either walking here from my house or just coming through the doors. They used to try and frequent this place, and I wasn't going to turn down a paying customer, but have not seen them in the last 24 hours, no. That's good. Well, if you do hear anything, please let us know. We'll probably be on our way out of here in the next day or so. We're moving on to see what we can see in the... Next town over, whose name I've just forgotten. Fallstock. Fallstock. <laughs> we'll get there. Eventually, you'll be going to the city so much you'll have to remember them, or I'll punish you. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> That's all. Uh, and he thanks you again for your help. Says you're welcome back anytime. Uh, he also mentions that he will pass on the word to Sam Shore Orion. That was the gentleman whose children were kidnapped by the hags, and you went and helped them, but. He, of course, had gotten connected directly to the Blades, so Radagaud talks about how it's going to be nice to let him know that his family should be safe here, at least for the time being. I don't think they'll be coming back, and if they do, it certainly won't be in force for any time soon. Yeah, we're pretty yeah. remote out here to the east. I do worry maybe a little bit about retribution from the Blades, but it would take them a long time to organize it, and even then, we at least know <laughs> to expect them this time. And we can always call on you, isn't that right, brother? If I'm around, I'd be more than happy to help. You were certainly good the first time. Well, anyways, come now. Drink food. It's on the house as food. usual. Food! <laughs> Just 
I just kind of pretended I didn't see or hear any of that from her. It's like, yep. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and very quickly, a nice spread is put out in front of you. And it's, it's interesting because there are plenty of like meats and stuff, but Radagog is apparently attended to detail, and there is a couple of different things for Lena to choose from as well. Oh, yay. Oh, Thank you. Cute. No. <laughs> <laughs> nom, 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 nom. Why would you do that? <laughs> So, pleasant meal. Anything else you'd like to do while you are here? Specifically at the tavern, or I guess in Cigar Cove as a whole. Uh, I'll I'll play up my uh, sweet, sweet charisma stats and start uh, uh, backslapping around and see if there's anybody in the in the area who knows anything about anything that might be interesting with regards to the blades or slaves. Okay. Serving up beer to or uh, loosen lips. Oh, can I look at that? Dagger that I got. Sure. <laughs> I forgot about you it. Absolutely can. <laughs> I want to look at it. So okay. I'm just gonna. I forgot about it until just now. I kind of stashed it, but and I got distracted with the whole Holden thing. But um, I'm at the bar and I kind of remember and I, I take it out and I'm, I'm looking at it. Okay. Uh, so let's do yours first since it's shorter. It's um, it is an ebony dagger and it has a hilt that has like a really tight black cord wrapped around it. Mm. It also appears to have like a button of some sort. You get that it is giving off some kind of magical essence, but you don't know what it is. Okay. It would need to be identified by somebody or with a magic spell or... But it does appear to be magical of nature, and it does have a button on the outside that you could push. Uh... <laughs> uh... You jump on beds, no, but you don't push no, buttons? No, no, no. I would like to, but I am going to take it to Tessian, who I understand is better with magical whatevers than I am, um, and just ask for his opinion. Uh, I mean, he looks at it, and uh, he's like, well, it's clearly magical. Unfortunately, I uh, I don't know the spell to identify these, although uh, I suppose I could kind of try to get a look at it. I don't know. Can I make an Arcana check or something? Uh, I don't know. You can. I... Let's see how you do. I do not have high hopes about blindly arcana a dagger here, but... You probably shouldn't. 16? That's not bad. Oh, wow. Um, even from your limited experience with it, you can't get all the details on it, but looking at its design and thinking about things that you may have seen similarly, maybe from the armory back in Black Harbor or someplace else, um, it appears to be a dagger that can inject poison in some way. Uh, so he'll press the button. Mm -hmm. and, and as you do so, I... you notice at the very tip of the blade, there's like a, there's an opening, a very small slit alongside the, like the very tip comes to a point that's sharp and could stab. But alongside that, it's a very small, almost imperceptible slit. And when you push the button, you see this really, like, just a few drops of this black Icarus liquid kind of drip down the side of the blade. And oh. he'll he'll kind of show that to, to Grail, and he'll be like, I believe this uh, dagger is capable of poisoning uh, those that it stabs, so uh, do be careful with it. And he'll sort of, like, wipe the poison <laughs> off harmlessly on something after he shows it to her. Wow, this is exciting. All right, thank you. Um, and I kind of just, I carefully store it <laughs> for future use. Okay. Uh, Karash, as you're canvassing the room and handing out libations to everybody, and you notice Radagog, Radagog, as you keep coming back and now distributing free drinks to the entire bar, gives you kind of a side eye, but he's like, ah, I like that guy anyway, so he doesn't say anything about it. <laughs> I thought I was paying for those. Oh well, if you can if you want to, I suppose. Yeah, yeah I didn't want to. I don't, I'm not going to be. I'm going to shaft Rodagog. I see. So yeah, you can talk. He said. Yeah. He said it was on their house. He said yeah, but for us, not for everyone in the house. No. Come on, That's in, the Cigar Cove. And Everybody eats for free today. <laughs> it's JB's. Um, yeah, you can toss a couple silver coins on the table. They'll take care of the majority of these, and you can hand them out. Uh, the handful of people who are in here. Most of them don't even know what was going on. You know, a lot of the stuff of the blades was sort of under the table. Their agreement at the docks was not super well known. But there are a couple of people who have at least been impacted by it or seen something going on. You know, the nosy neighbor type is one of them. There's one man who's like, you know, I saw a lot of stuff going on at the docks. I was wondering about that. Um, 
They don't have a whole lot of information as far as the blades themselves. They have not seen them recently. They don't know anything about slaves, unfortunately. Uh, for the most part, it seems like, especially because the docks are on the far side of town, the large majority of people here were completely oblivious to the fact that anything this untoward was going on in the city. Yeah, fair enough. So you make some friends. Um, they're appreciative of the free drinks, and they uh, seem to be like you know more affable to your company, but they don't have any information that is particularly helpful. Okay. So at the table with Lena and Tessian and Grail, clearly uh, beef jerky was not cutting it because I'm just shoveling food in. <laughs> so um, I was thinking maybe something like truth seekers or maybe seekers of truth. Oh, I like that. Oh, excuse me. For our <laughs> name, maybe. I like the ring to it. I haven't given it a lot of thought yet. <laughs> What about seekers of food? <laughs> Would be more accurate. Also good. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's cute. Uh, Tessian's like, I still think this name is a little silly. We aren't exactly a guild yet, but if I had a vote, I would just say seekers. Both fair. I like that too. I'm a little distracted because I am currently. I'm, I want to open up my letter and, and read it. Okay. So I'm going to start. Fiddling with that at the table, but try to keep it under wraps like not everyone notices, but I, I do want to read it now because I don't want to wait. Uh, <laughs> sure. I don't want to wait. Anyway. I'm going to avoid the question <laughs> by pretending to be engaged in conversation with someone around the other side of the table. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know these people. What are you talking about? <laughs> okay. <Woo. laughs> um, the letter is relatively short. It is handwriting that you recognize. Okay. It is signed by your grandmother. Okay. And it essentially says, I'm scrolling. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. I don't think we ever decided on a name for your grandma. No, we didn't. I'll have to go dig out your notes for that. Yeah, it's I don't... her. Whatever. <laughs> I have it on my other, on my other <laughs> list. I figure that out. I'm sure I'd need it today. I should have been prepared more. Uh, <laughs> Just call but, her Mima. Dear old know. grandma, your favorite <laughs> grandmother in the world. Hello, dear <laughs> grandma. <laughs> Honey, granddaughter of mine. It's been so no. long. No. <laughs> it's, it's too much, I know. Uh, the gist of the letter, it says... I'm sorry for what your father did. The family did not agree that this was the best course of action. Please stop by when you have a chance. It's not urgent, but there's more about this that I think you should know. Signed, mm. Grandma. Edited in post. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there we go. Grandma Dorothy. <laughs> Hey, um, as I'm eating a, just a, a huge bite of this burrito. What you got there, Lena? Oh, and, and I immediately fold it back up and, and, and tuck it away in one of my, um, in, in my pouch. I have a pouch, right. Yeah. I, I tuck it away in my pouch. And I'm like, oh, it was just the, the letter I got earlier from the mayor. I was checking it. Who is it from? Uh... <laughs> It's Look, he's a part of a group called Seekers. You have to track down this information. <laughs> yeah, that's justice. True. She, she, she's she's thinking. Uh, she's thinking. Um, it's it's from my grandmother. Oh, you know, I, I need to stop. I'm, I, I I've eaten now. I was gonna um, say you can't be taking yeah. a bite every time you talk. <laughs> or can I? Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, it occurs to me we never got into your family. Uh, back at uh, the stronghold. What's a, what gives her, like? Is it a good letter? Tessian gives her a very worn, warning look. He gives Le Lena a oh, look. Oh, yeah. Like, and she, yeah. She, she knows. Uh, she, she meets your gaze for like can a split I, second. Chris, can I do like a perception to see if I notice the gaze? <laughs> or ins I don't know what it would be. Insight, maybe? I would say make an insight check. It's not only about I'm definitely truth. not. Op opposed <laughs> by my deception check? Uh, it depends on who's his look he's looking for, I suppose. Yeah, who are you looking at here? Um, but I'm talking to you, so it, it kind of depends on how the table's situated. And... Go ahead and make a deception check to oppose his insight check. Not that you're necessarily being deceiving. I just want to see how hard you are to read. 
Okay. Insight's not always about truth specifically. It's also about just picking up signs and tells. That makes one sense. Wait, which one am I doing? De deception? deception? Oh, good heavens. 21 is probably going to be tough. <laughs> it's terrible. Oh, my God. You rolled a 21. Nope. Oh, you oh, got an 18. I got an 18. Though. I mean, oh, no. it's not okay. enough, but I tried. This is a different behavior than you have seen from Lena. She is sometimes flighty in conversation, but not like evasive. It doesn't seem like she's like lying to you, but you get the sense that she's definitely holding something back. So what? 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 So, so you were saying so, something? So I well, was. So yeah. I was responding something to the effect of, like, "Oh, my family's not special. We're we're just we're very normal, typical family." Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm no stranger to secrets, so we can just leave it there for now. Yeah, she's definitely staring at you now. <laughs> she knows. <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then I go back to my burrito. <laughs> it's a lovely burrito. So, it's a good burrito. I actually wanted to, I wanted to ask Davith really quick. Um, did, did you have a home here in Cigar Cove? There was a family that took me in on the southeast side of town, since I'm not really from here. Um, they were nice enough, despite the fact that I'm... Um, I stick out a little bit in this particular community, but I have places I can stay, yes. I smack my hand down on the table and I say, you should stay at our house and care, uh, keep, yep, caretake it for us. <laughs> I was going to suggest the same thing. Aww. So. He's a taker of care. She taker says, of care. And she was, she, kind of, she was with you guys when you went there, so she says, mm -hmm. a place like that with just, just me in it most of the time? That, that's, that's too generous. I mean, I mean it's, it's helpful to have someone to take care of the house. So, I, I mean, if you sit feel bad about it, you can clean it. You can you can clean it if there's anyone else who needs to be taken in. You can let them stay. I uh, I just think that with something like that, you got to use it. And we won't be here that often, I don't think. First, we were killing all the female characters. Now we're making them clean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> she says, "Well, yeah. I I." I would be happy to do so. It's a, it's a very nice thing you've offered. If that'll give you peace of mind while you're on your travels, I will happily take care of this giant place for you. It ain't about peace of mind. I want you to have a place to stay. I like you. Well, I'll have to go get my possessions from the place where I was staying and thank them for their generosity as well, but I can be there by tonight. Hey, Grail, what do you think? DeBeth, the sixth honorary member of the Seekers. Absolutely. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, there are audible face palms. I'm right. like a... real stoked. I'm in a mood. I am like feeling great. And like Stuart is like egging me on. I can tell. <laughs> Just like, yes, I'm, I'm ready I'm, to go. I'm starting to think Grail's energy levels are affected by her blood sugar. I mean, most people's are, but like more so <laughs> yes. for her. Yes. yes, that's very, very true. Welcome to the group, Debeth. Hey, Grail, try this burrito. It's really good. Oh, my gosh. Me? I reach over, and I'm like, I grab it, and I'm eating it. Mm -hmm. Take a bite. <laughs> this is really good. That is one good burrito. What? That is one good burrito. If <laughs> I've ever really had a good, good burrito, this is it. And it Hot is. damn. This is the best burrito I've ever tried. <laughs> the only burrito I've ever tried. <laughs> Radagog runs a good establishment. I mean, Guy Fieri was here once. It's 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 pretty well known. It's nice. it's got Legit. really good like dive food. Nice. <laughs> Nothing particularly healthy. You. But <laughs> you know, if it's, it's a got, bar, it's got cooties on it now. But yeah, <laughs> it's true. You guys are secretly transmitted you. disease you didn't know you had. Well, dead. That's it. It's the yes. end of the campaign. Yes. It's been fun. <laughs> yeah, when 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 Allison touched Grail and with that necrotic energy. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> She's got the clap. So I thought um, people were shipping us. That's a shame. Well, I mean, it's a uh, uh, so uh, <laughs> nice meal. You spent a couple of hours just enjoying the fact that you had some time in a place where you've got some nice relationships. You have a house in the city now. Um, what else would you like to do in Cigar Cove? It's now getting to be like late afternoon. A secure uh, transport for tomorrow or whenever it is we decide to leave. Okay. I would like I... to go to the library if there is one. Okay. Uh, I'd like to get a uh, uh, see see about finding a 
proper blacksmith that can install a lightning rod uh, on the house we were just given. Okay. <laughs> so that is shit. fancy. <laughs> what else is everybody? So that's that's the three of you. That's the cutest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Um, there are some like blacksmith there's a blacksmith or something like that i just want to see if there's any anything we can purchase uh there's an entire market area not too far from the docks uh where you might be able to find services like that so i guess you and karash could head that way because they would both be in that same area that's true um okay. anybody else doing anything anybody else um Lemon, i'll go with is... grail to check out the stuff okay i don't know if i'll get anything but i mean yeah I might not be able to afford anything, but I'd like to see what they have. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, Stuart, I've chosen you first. I don't know Great. why. Um, <laughs> there is a small library in the western part of town, and um, it's smaller than your house, your newfound lovely home. But it does have an assortment of books to it. depends on what you're looking for. Uh, excuse me, librarian. I'm looking for something. Yes. Whoa. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Oh, you thought I was going to be a mousy female bookkeeper? <laughs> I was, uh, I'm looking for uh, tales by Ayla McPherson, uh, Tales of the Gunslinger. There's a whole set of volumes of them. You're such uh, a fucking dork. <laughs> Ayla McPherson? Yeah, Ayla McPherson, the little known uh, sister of the woman who was married to Tiger Woods. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's an obscure reference. It's fine. I knew it for Pete's sake. <laughs> uh, and she's, she's, she 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 kind of looks through. She, they don't have like a computer or anything. There's no such thing yet. But <laughs> she, she logs in. Yes. <laughs> beep beep boop beep 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 boop boop. Um, she kind of thinks for a moment. They're all kind of arranged alphabetically, so she can go over and she's like, "Well, we, she, he." <laughs> yes, I fell into my own trap. Thanks a lot. Thanks a fucking lot. It could be it could be Doctor Girlfriend. You know, <laughs> Doctor Girlfriend. Uh, he leads you over to where the T's are, and there's a volume three, there's a volume five, there's a volume seven, but that's all uh, we have that's not currently checked out, if they even have the other editions to begin with. Oh, five, that's that's perfect. And seven? Oh, that's very good. Uh, I've wanted to read uh, Out of Time and uh, Of Serpents and Stallions for a long time now. Are you making Yes. No. <laughs> I would like to check them both out if that is okay. I've only read the first part. Do they get better as they go? Oh, it's it's great. I, it's a little bit fluffy, you know. Uh, it's, it's not high end writing, but what I like about it is it inspires <laughs> you. Uh, you read it, and it's who you want to be, and I think that's pretty valuable in today's world. I mean, my nine year old niece loves them. Maybe I'll give them a second chance. Yeah, and they drop the 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 love triangle later on. I think it's much better after they do that. All right, well, you got a library card? Uh, not yet, but I will soon. <laughs> all right, come with me. He leads you back to the desk. You bring the two books. Uh, all right, just fill this out real quick. Just give me a name. We'll give you your card. You can come back here anytime you need to. You only can have these for a week now. Oh, God. Okay. He's going to rack up library fees. <laughs> so I write an I and an S, and then I cross it out, and then I write Stuart McKinley on the library card. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's no form of ID or anything yet, so that's going to be perfectly fine. Okay. <laughs> All right, Stuart. A week from today, I hope you enjoy your books. Thank you. I'm very much looking forward to them. This is the cutest shit ever. I know. <laughs> Can I have like a whole series of you just book hunting? <laughs> Please let me know if you get n number six in, though. Who I'll knew read that seven your if I have to. actual arc is going to be you just trying to find book six. Right. It's very important. Yeah. It's Stuart, another librarian. <laughs> it's a quacky sitcom coming to NBC no. because the uh, author is going to get into trouble and we're going to have to go save her and yep. like it'll be a whole thing. Yeah, yep. you just gave me a new Mary Sue. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dude. Um, Crash, you guys with you and Grail and Lena head to the marketplace and I'm scrolling the wrong way. This is the only problem with having so many notes. I have to find a better way to organize these. There we go. Um, so you know that there was a general goods store, but you guys haven't actually been to this market section yet. And 
you've kind of seen it in passing because it's not too far from the docks and it's big enough that you can sort of side eye it. I think you guys actually did see it at one point. But here is a like the streets have had people on them walking to and from. This area is busy. There are dozens of customers flocking between different booths and tents and they're all outdoor structures and it's kind of built into this nook in between houses of maybe like 50 feet by 50 feet and you hear different vendors kind of hawking their wares and uh, looking around you do see somebody who deals with weapons has a decent sized stall that's probably the closest you're going to find to a blacksmith if that's where you'd like to head first yeah I'll give that a go in this worst <laughs> case scenario Okay, you see a pretty burly dude with an apron on. He's got a mask on. He's got a hammer as he comes up. So it does appear that he does some smithing work. And he says, Oi, what can I do for you? Do you know how to make a lightning rod? Well, it's a bit irregular. It might involve enchanting, too, but possibly, yeah. I just mean the the big, like, tall kind, not the le magic kind. The, the one kind that just gets struck by lightning. That one. That's the one. You you trying to get yourself struck by lightning, or...? I'm trying to prevent my building from getting struck by lightning. All right. Yeah, I mean, pretty much any piece of metal should do that. Let's see, what have I got around here? And he kind of digs through his stuff. Finds a long metal rod that has, like, a ball on the top, and it has, like, some sort of weird adhesive on the bottom. We're not entirely sure what it is, but it does seem like it would be able to be stuck somewhere up on the roof serviceable for okay. your function. Do you, does he have... Uh, I'm going to see if he has something that can ground it the rest of the way down into the ground, because if it's up there, it needs to go all the way in. Okay. Um, he has the ability to do that. He talks about how it's going to maybe take... Uh, he's got some other projects he's working on. might take a day to prepare, but should be doable. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what does he want for it, cost-wise? Uh, not a whole lot to it, and the materials are simple. Let's call it three gold. Okay. Uh, I can do that, and I tell him where the house is located, and and it put it as high up on the house as he can get it. Okay, I'll have my men run it over as soon as it's done. Uh, thank you. I'll pay him. Okay, pockets the gold, gives you a smile. What are you guys looking for, if anything in particular? There's a whole bunch of shops. Uh, yeah. Um. Let's see. Does the smith have any cool, like, like, rapiers or anything, like, exciting, like, fun to... I kind of want a window shop, to be honest. I don't know what he's got. He has what looks to be a relatively basic assortment of weapons. And just from a, an understanding of how the economy works, magical items are typically, like, extremely expensive because the enchanting yeah. process is a long one. It right. can take you know weeks or months, depending on the level of the enchantment. So for the most part, he has some nifty-looking weapons, a couple different-looking rapiers from what you have, but nothing that sticks out like, that's the thing i got to have. Okay. Um, is there an apothecary nearby? Um, yes, there is. <gasps> okay. I want to see if they have any potions, any kind of whatever. Um, Shopkeep there mentions that they're a little bit short on stock, but they do have both a regular healing potion and a greater healing potion for sale. Mm. A greater healing potion that... is probably going to be out of your income bracket. Yeah. If I remember correctly. I think you're right about that. I don't have those in front of me. I would have a, if I had a DM screen, I would. Let's see here. Do to do, do potion of greater healing. That's the one. No, that's not the one. <laughs> I'm. Fairly confident that it's going to... I mean, like, even the regular potion of healing is 50, 50 gold, so... Ah, uh, dang. The okay. greater one is probably going to be much more than that. All right. Yeah, no, I only have 20 gold to my name right now, so um, good to know. Yeah, I potions, think I only uh, have, like, 10 gold Potions are pretty pricey. Great. They yeah. are... There's only a limited number of people who can make them successfully, and obviously they have trained for that, and they open their own shops and whatnot, but... Mm -hmm. They are of relatively scarce quantity, so they're generally difficult to find, and when they are findable, they are expensive. You should have more than 10, I, though. I don't, you probably won't have enough to afford this thing. I have but. no idea, but I am going to tell Grail, because I remembered this is a thing I have. Herbalist kit, I have that, so I can probably make a Us. potion and such. So that is true. I'll just kind of whisper that in her in her ears, so the apothecary <laughs> people don't hear us, because that's awkward. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, that's that's good to know. I appreciate it, especially because uh, potions are not cheap. 
Now there mm-hmm. are he does have a handful of materials as well, and for fifteen gold, you could get enough to try and make one basic healing potion. It would also depend on a check and whatnot, and obviously that would probably be better for Lena because she's, you know, actually versed in this stuff, whereas you are yeah. new to it. But yeah, it's possible that you can no you can make the supply, and it would at least make some kind of potion. Depending on how well you do on it, it might do more healing or not, but. Unless you're, like, not wanting it, uh, it would probably be a regular potion of some kind that would heal something. It might, um, be, might be poison if you'd not want it, but we'll see about that when the bridge comes. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll go ahead and buy some of the ingredients. Why not? Okay. 15 gold? Yep. All right. I have All right. no money. That's fine. Well, you know. <laughs> so what are the ingredients? Should I just write down that they're ingredients for... Yeah, basically just the ingredients to make one potion. We won't go into the minutia of it. Unless you really okay. want to. But No, it's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else you guys want to do in the market area? Um, let's see did, here. Did the guy look like the guy had any swords that would do more damage than mine? Uh, not particularly, no. Maybe equivalent. <laughs> but yeah, We're good. Yeah. <laughs> not really a town. Sort of what the mayor talked about when you guys first came through is it's not a town that has a lot of capable fighters, so it's not really a huge market for it. Now people come into the port and whatnot, so there's why there's a stand for it, and there's still a guy who does work. But yeah, not a town that particularly worries about that kind of stuff. They're not. We should like yet. We should buy like farm animals and shit, and have David take care of them and make money. In the living room. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. The yard. I'm, th- I'm thinking like ranch style. Like this is all I know. <laughs> cows are like super cheap, isn't it? Cows that are something is, and I'm just like yeah. You there's a buy whole all kinds of stuff. There's a whole thing to it. Yeah. You don't we don't have... have to do that now. There but, is a s- hey. there- there's a small yard at the house. I don't know if it's going to have a lot of grazing potential for cows. We could garden. They would probably starve to death. You could garden. Yeah, that's my jam. Okay. Oh, that'd be so fun. Tessian, you're heading back to yes. the mayor's place? Uh, Sure, or wherever it is that we need to secure transportation. Okay. Um, mayor's probably the best bet just because you've gotten it from him before. Uh, you could probably wander through town and find a stableman quick enough, but easier enough to go to him and he can always direct you. Um, it's pretty straightforward business. He promises that he'll have it ready at the west exit of town again, just like last time, since everybody who's leaving Cigar Cove on land is going west. Um, and that this time again, you're free to keep it as necessary. Do whatever you need to with it. Hell, you can resell it if you want to, although we'd be a little sad, but <laughs> whatever you'd like to do with it, the cart, the cart and the horse horses there's two of them uh, are yours okay um do i know like or i ask him i guess if i need to like is a cart and a horse gonna work or like is the road gonna get rough like if we're going to fall stock are we gonna be okay with that or should we be taking just horses road should be fine <sighs> there is a pretty well-developed path because these are two of the bigger cities in the area so it should be almost entirely like road there, you know, dirt road with rocks, but it'll be suitable for a cart without too much difficulty. Okay. Um, and then I ask him, uh, I mean, I know he, he clearly does it somehow, but like uh, if I wanted to send a message back to Black Harbor, uh, where, would I, where would I do that here? Uh, let's see. I guess it's a question of what type of message. Uh, just a letter. Just a letter, not like a yeah. magical one. Not, I mean, it doesn't need to be, like, anything fancy. He just wants to send word back to his uh, his mom, essentially, about okay. what's going on. Um, he tells you that, believe it or not, the person at the library is actually the best person to help you with that. It shouldn't be too difficult. They can help you with making sure the letter is ready, and then they have pigeons. <laughs> D&D pigeons. Okay. <laughs> they can take the message for you. should take, uh, as far as Black Harbor is... Uh, maybe a day because the bird's got to rest. Bird can't go the whole way on one day. That's silly. One segment. But we'll get there in relatively quick time. Okay. Um, then once he's once the transportation is set up, he'll head to the library uh, to uh, to do that. Okay. Uh, you guys complete your errands for the day. 
meet back up at the house or something. You didn't really talk about it, but I'm assuming you can figure it out. I don't know. If you want, if you don't want the house, you can tell me. I'm not going to force you to meet at the house. I love it. House is good. Do I, do I bump into Stuart walking out with like two obscure uh, adventure novels for uh, young adults? <laughs> from the library as I'm going in. Yeah, that's fine. You guys, you guys are actually heading in a way that you would have a chance of bumping into each other. Yes. Yeah, Tessin is just like, oh, what you, uh, what you get? The next novels of the series that I'm reading, Tales of the Gunslinger. And uh, Tessin's like, I don't know that I've heard of that one. Uh, what's it about? Oh, it's it's very good. There's a there's a gunslinger. His name is Carmichael, and it just chronicles his adventures uh, throughout the land as he searches for his loved one. Um, I think it's important to read novels like this. They kind of are a guiding light into what is heroic and how we should be in real life to uh, galvanize uh, people to to earn their respect. Uh, you could say it's like kind of homework for me. Does it agree? He's like, no, I uh, I understand. I uh, I have some experience with uh, bards and tall tales myself. It's uh, it's an admirable quality. So uh, good on you. And he <laughs> tries to be as cordial as he can, but he doesn't like give you a pat or anything. And he just carries on into the library to do his business. If you if you want to read uh, books one through three, I actually own them. It's uh, the fourth one I have returned, and now I have five and seven. Uh, and Tessin's like, well, typically I have a bit more uh, academic leaning to my reading, but uh, perhaps I will. Ayla McPherson, she might surprise you. <laughs> Just putting it out there. And he's like, I'll, I'll keep it in mind. I'll keep it in mind. All right, I'll see you back at the house. Uh, so he just goes in and talks to the librarian about writing a letter and sending it, essentially. Sure. So, Easy enough to whatever that is. Doesn't even request any money for the like the the process of it, especially because you know he knows sort of who you are. He's heard of you, and the fact that it's such a simple service. He's like, yeah, it's on the house. Everything's on the house in Cigar Cove. It's very nice. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I don't I don't know if you actually need to know what I'm sending, but I can always tell you later. So. You can tell me later. It's fine. Yeah. I mean, if it's gonna affect things in the next ten seconds when before we're done, then I should know. Nope. But I don't think it is. Nope. Not at all. <laughs> Dear mother, I'm going to kill them all. <laughs> oh. I would like to know that, yes. That would be good for me to know as a DM. Uh, Aaron's completed. You guys head back to the house. It's now like early evening. Sun is setting. You guys want to stay the night before you head out or head out immediately? I think we should stay the night. Yeah, we got to enjoy our house at least once. Yeah, I think well. time is of the essence, but it doesn't hurt anything to stay one more night, start the trip well rested. Okay, so we'll leave off right there. You guys can still maybe do some stuff in the evening and or the morning before you leave if you want to, but we'll use this opportunity to end the session. Next time, we'll see what happens in the house of ill repute. That's, that's, that's mean. That's not. It's a nice house. It's really a pleasant house too. Yeah, it's like, it'll be great it's, until the thunder rod destroys it. Yes. Yes. By the way, just out of curiosity, Michaela, is our guild called the Seekers of Truth? Oh, we're the seekers of memes. Okay, was it ever truth? Is it? God. Is this just car Is this cosmic influences <laughs> in the universe coming I together? I think it's just cosmic influence. I don't think it was ever okay. truth, but it's yeah. What, we're, in the, we're, we're in the same guild in the Kingdom Hearts mobile uh, game. Yeah. And I yep. thought it was maybe exactly called Keepers of Truth before they changed it to Keeper of Memes, which I thought was weird. Don't know why everybody yeah. wanted to know it, that. It changes just... like every other week, though. So I mean, we never yeah. really know. I was what looking we're at called. you because I was like, I think that's what our guild was called. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly we should be the seekers of, of memes and uh, yeah. go I mean, around I looking for cats. I can ask the leader and... and see if he ever called it that at one point. I'm just worried but... about copyright, that's all. <laughs> Anyways, it's true. that's it for this session. Remember all the usual stuff. You can check us out at the places you see at the bottom of the screen. That's down there. That's it for this episode of the Anachroschism. We'll see you next time. <laughs>